Hey everyone, welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about a move, a cruise, and our summer groove. Ten short weeks ago we laid out a lot of plans, but how did we do? Join us as we laugh and look back on summer 2019. So hey everyone. Hi Julie. Hey Marie. Hey Mindy. How are you hey, guys Julie. doing? Great. It's hey good Marie. To good to see you. Listeners, I can hardly believe it, but summer is almost officially over here. Our school year begins in wait for it. Two days. All right. That's just (laughs) awesome. I'm a little jealous. (laughs) It seems like such a short time ago we were recording our summer strategy, our game plan for surviving 10 or so weeks of unstructured life. And now it's already coming to a close. And if you missed that episode, it was number 31. Go back and listen, because if you live in an area that doesn't go back to school until after Labor Day, there are still lots of ideas on things that you can do with your summer and a lot of ways that you can make the most of summer days. And I'll still be using a lot of them on the weekends because I never did get to my whole list. Yeah, and this still feels like summer down here. You know, it's so hot. Sure. And this is the part of the year where things just really slow down and you might get bored. My kids won't even go outside. Like it's 95 degrees during the day. And they're like, I'm not going out there. It's not just hot. It's stupid hot. That's what they call it. (laughs) And that's stupid hot here too. Yes. (laughs) So it's a total cliche to say that summer went by so fast, except you guys back me up, except it's not a cliche for me to say it because I have never said it in my adult raising kids life. As I said in Summer Strategy, I'm not the biggest fan of summer, and the days can feel really long for me. But this year, it truly, truly flew by. Now, I am not going to cross over to the dark side and bemoan the fact that school is starting. I cannot do that. (laughs) You will not hear me saying, oh, school is starting. But I did appreciate our time off. and. I am ready to cross over into fall because that's my favorite. I love all the fresh starts. I love the cooler weather. I love the lead up to the holidays. But this summer was a good one. It definitely was the quickest summer on record ever. And even um, David, who was here, you know, all summer agrees. Mm -hmm. I I think everybody's saying that for some reason. I don't know what the difference is. I mean, there still are 24 hours in the day. Right. I don't know. (laughs) You know, I feel like we spent our whole summer waiting to move, you know, like in preparation of a move. And so um, it was hairy there towards the end of being in, you know, our townhouse with six people. But now that we have just moved into our home, I'm like, OK, now summer is starting for us. And yes. it's like almost gone. Like Abby leaves in a couple of weeks and then the boys start back and like close to, well a month. <laughs> right, you just have to right. make the most of this this last yes. month as your summer. Yes. It will it really will be. Yes. All right, so let's get down to it. Listeners, today we're just going to be catching you up. We're going to do an update on how summer went. We're going to catch you up on the last few weeks because all three of us have had some things going on. But Mindy has the most exciting news to share. It is a true family milestone and she just hinted at it. But Mindy moved after an entire year. She is now in yes. her own home. Tell us about oh. it, Mindy. Oh, it it is just, there is so much joy to finally be at this point. And I feel like, you know, the transition over that whole year, we were unsettled. There was this unsettled feeling. And you could probably hear that in different things that I said. And I felt like I was guarding my heart even from being excited. And there's something about owning a home, having a place to come home to your Mm -hmm. own yard, pulling in your own driveway. I just can't tell you like sitting on my own couch, sleeping in my own bed after a whole year, we rented our furniture. We are all so excited to have this home. And I feel like for the first time in Pennsylvania, we're going to start living to the fullest. 
and we are just thrilled. We closed just a week ago, and seriously, the house is almost settled. I, I We are just so thrilled about getting things in their spots. I've never hung pictures on walls so fast. I'm like, that should go there. Where's my screwdriver, my screw? <laughs> and I'm even using a level. Yeah, you're welcome, Bryce. I'm actually <laughs> measuring and make sure things are like, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's catch any new listeners that we have up. So Mindy used to live in Tennessee. Yes. Along with Julie and I. And then a year ago, um, her husband accepted a job in Pennsylvania. And they moved. And this whole entire year, she's been living in a townhome that had three bedrooms for six people. And it's been a tight squeeze. She's had rented furniture, like she said, a new community. You know, it's just been a different experience. And so this is so right. exciting that when did you move, Mindy? Just last week? It was just last week. It probably first, feels like Christmas yeah. every day, opening up a new box that you have not seen in a year. <laughs> oh. uh, Marie, our boxes are already gone through. Are they really? Yeah, that that's is amazing. the fastest move. <laughs> first of all, I'm a military brat. <laughs> and, you know how to do um, it. <laughs> we know how to do it. And it's always the mental, emotional, social part. And I have to tell you, one of the things that gave us the most joy was when we're unloading boxes and we're outside, we met three different neighbors and that just thrilled me to death. I told Bryce, I was like, I feel overstimulated. We haven't had that much interaction (laughs) with neighbors in a year. (laughs) I'm like, people want to talk to us outside. What is this about? I loved it so much. And it turns out our next door neighbor right next door has three boys, which are the exact same ages as Abby Ray, Grant and Jacob. No way. I was like, so cool. It's amazing. So (laughs) Mindy, I want to say what you shared yesterday on social media was just uh, so, so encouraging. And I just, I think it's a testimony, you know, to God's faithfulness and, and also just in giving you your friend, Katie, yeah. Like that little cactus is such a great word picture. Like I, it's blooming in the desert during that yes. kind of dry, yes. unsettled time it's, in your life. It was a very lonely, grieving, sad year. And it was a desert season. And I feel like it's springtime in my soul, if I can <laughs> say that right now, because That little cactus that Katie gave me has meant the world to me. It was one of the first things I hand carried over to the house and put in the windowsill the first day that we closed. That got hand carried. (laughs) Because it, it does remind me that the Lord provides in those seasons where we can't see around the bend. You can't see over the hill. You're just in a valley. Mm-hmm. And we are coming out of the valley and we're just extremely excited. Oh, All of us. Awesome. There's just a lot of joy. Yeah. And it's so great that you got to move in the summer and Abby Ray is there to also experience this joy with the family before she goes back to school. Yes. Abby gets two whole weeks in her own room before <laughs> she goes back to college. <laughs> She'll be able to leave on a good note. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually, it's so much um, more exciting to send her back to school. She knows that we're settled, so mm-hmm. it helps her leave. And she knows she has a place to come home to that's hers. Well, I am so happy for you guys. And oh, this you. week on Instagram, uh, we will put up some pictures of Mindy's new house and the yes. joy that is them moving in their huge beaming smiles. <laughs> And Julie, you just got back from a fun girls trip. Julie's going to give us inspiration for when we all get to a point in life where we (laughs) can leave town without worrying about child care, pet care, nothing. We just say, hey, to our husband, I'm going on a trip with my girlfriends. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I traveled with three other ladies. Now, one of them um, still has two kids at home, but they're old enough to kind of be on their own. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been friends for 30 plus years and we all live in different cities. And we were talking on this trip that I think since we moved apart, we've actually been more intentional about our friendship. Yeah. If we'd stayed in the same city, I'm not sure we would have been as close as we are now. So that was really fun. We planned a trip to Newport, Rhode Island to tour all the Gilded Age period homes of the Vanderbilts. They called them cottages. That's oh so goodness. cool. <laughs> They're summer cottages. So, um, you know, we toured five houses and the gardens. 
did the cliff walk. It's a, it's a three and a half mile walk along the ocean. And then we went to Block Island on a ferry. And that's just a magical place, kind of like stepping back in time to a mm-hmm. kind of Victorian period, all the buildings. It was just mm-hmm. really nice. I loved all your pictures with your friends and with the, what are they called? Topiaries? Like the, yeah, the, the all these yeah. animals, elephants yeah. and giraffes that were life size. It was uh-huh. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> that big great. Teddy bear. <laughs> yes. Getting yourself a hug. <laughs> and Marie just lost sight of land for for a yes. few days there. How was that, Marie? Your oh, cruise? good. Yes. It was really fun. It was awesome to get away and have all the meals taken care of. Oh, that's what that. everybody always talks about on a ship. And I really do think that as the mom, it just takes planning just totally off your shoulders. Mm-hmm. I told Julie before we left, yeah. I kind of felt like I was missing something and not planning more. But with the cruise, right. it's kind of like you book your tickets, you book your excursion, and there's really nothing else for you to plan. I know. I feel like when I took my kids on the cruise, it's harder just to pack. Yes. Like to make sure everybody has everything packed well. And once you're done packing and you get there, it's like you walk on that that ship, you drop your stuff off and you're you're free. Yeah. Unless your luggage doesn't arrive. Well, unless you're Julie <laughs> and you have to <laughs> go buy everything new at the mall. <laughs> so we did a lot. We What we had fun doing was a lot of the ship activities together. Mm-hmm. The ones that sound cheesy when you're on land, but when you get on the ship, trivia night suddenly sounds really fun or oh, karaoke. So or yes. the newlywed game, like all these really <gasps> super corny things are really fun when you're on the ship. Just exactly. like we talked about in our family vacation episode, a lot of things that you do on vacation, you wouldn't necessarily do, you wouldn't like choose to do at home. But oh, when yeah. you're on vacation, it's super funny to do them together. It is. It so, is. Oh, that's <laughs> so fun. But for anyone out there who's ever thought about a cruise, I definitely think it was a great family time, a lot of time to just enjoy other people doing things for you and you just kind of get to go around and have fun. And it was great. So let's get down to our summer update. And I went back and listened to episode 31 just to see what lofty goals we all had (laughs) just 10 short weeks ago that we thought we would be accomplishing. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to see how we all did. So are we giving ourselves like a passing grade, a failing grade? Are we like, <laughs> well, was there anything in your mind that stuck out as when you heard yourself say it, you were like, why did I ever even think I would get to that? Mm. Well, you know, I wrote down all of those movie nights, concert nights, yes. I had a little list of museums and zoos and things I wanted to visit, right. did not step foot in one museum, zoo or a park <gasps> or uh, a movie night. but. I feel like it was good to still have those on the calendar. I just didn't need them. Like we weren't bored. We weren't looking for something to do. One of the last nights, I think on a Friday night, I saw on the calendar, Mary Poppins Returns, Pinkerton Park. And we got a call the day before to have pizza, homemade pizza at a friend's house that night. So of course I chose that. Right. The relationship, you know, it was easy to let go of the Mary Poppins in the park night. But I was glad it was on there and it didn't just pass me by. I had a choice to make and I made mm-hmm. the choice that uh, that we wanted to make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So I felt good about it. Yeah. How about you, Mindy? Did anything stick out to you? I don't know well, that you I, would really set any things down I besides the, moving. <laughs> I know. I feel like moving was really the goal of our summer. There's a lot of places I've mentioned before that we want to travel to and visit. We made it to one of those places. Ooh. which we were thrilled about. We ended up going to Washington, D.C. just for one night and, and two days, but it was enough. But really, the goal of the summer was moving. I mean, we we won't even take a family vacation where even all of us go. Like to D.C., we just took the younger two boys. Yes. And we, and we had a blast, but it's like everyone, we've really kind of been everywhere. And now that we have a home, we all just want to be at home. Like right. we don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> 
Yes. I want to cook in my kitchen with my dishes. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's a totally different mindset at this point. So I'll say, (laughs) yes, I'll give myself a passing grade that we've accomplished the goal of the summer. We Mindy, you get a 100 for that. Oh my gosh. We moved out of the apartment and we've closed that out and we got all of our stuff out of our three storage units and that's closed out and we are all, and our stuff is all under one roof. So yes, that, that is quite the accomplishment. I will take that 100 as long as you give me a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is awesome. Yeah. Well, I went back and listened to some of the things. One of the things that stuck out in my mind was, I don't know why I even said I would do it. I said I was going to sit down and do a photo album. I have not <laughs> set my butt in that chair one time. Not even one time. <laughs> I still have a mental block against that. I'm still four or five years behind. And I think, well, maybe the fall. <laughs> That's right. You know, when it's cold outside, it'll be easier to sit down yeah, in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> what is up with that? And then another thing. Okay, so you guys tell me if I get a passing grade for this. I said I was going to go to a farmer's market. My mind really, really, oh. really wants to go to a farmer's market. On Saturday morning, my body does not want to get up and go to a it, farmer's market. It says no. Right. <laughs> but Steve and I were out for dinner one night um, in Nashville down in kind of a... If you don't live here, it's kind of like a trendier hipster type area. And they had a little corner, little tent that was selling vegetables, which I sort of count as a farmer's market. Oh, that counts. And I bought three zucchini and I made two loaves of bread. Okay. That's (laughs) Was it the one on 12 South? Yes. Yeah, that that definitely counts. You think so? Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. totally passing for me because you bought the zucchini, but then you actually did something with it. It didn't just go bad sitting in your refrigerator. <laughs> right. Just, I did let it sit about a week and I had to cut a little bit that it's sort of gone soft. You know, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I wanted to see about some of the other things. We all said that summer is a very relaxing time. Did you guys feel like it was more relaxed? I really didn't. Um, I feel like we traveled a lot this summer. So when I was home, I was just catching up on regular life. And as a pharmacist, I have to get continuing education that's due every two years. And and my time is up at the end of July. And every period I say, I'm going to just do one hour a month so I can just casually, you know, do it. I always wait till the month of July and I have to get 30 hours. Oh, Oh, no. So I spent literally every spare waking moment listening to webcast and reading articles and oh, taking tests. And so that was a bit stressful. So yes. don't let me do that again. <laughs> so not relaxing for you at all. Yeah. Like mine was a major. No, it was not relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I felt like we have been in transition and then it really amped up this summer. Um, we've had a lot of little trips, like different parts of our family, like Grant and I, Abby had a trip, Bryce and I with the boys and then Grant and I again. And, you know, we started the summer looking for houses and then the process of buying a home is not necessarily easy. No. And so that was, you know, that was a little stressful here and there. Relaxing. I finally feel like we're relaxing now, even though we're still just settling a house. It's right. It's it's time. Maybe we'll relax now. Right. Yes. (laughs) I would say that it was as relaxing as most years. I am teaching two 15-year-olds to drive. So every car ride the entire summer has not been relaxing because you can't just sit back and play on your phone or listen to a Mm -hmm. podcast or, I mean, you have to be on thinking, okay, if they make a wrong turn, I will leap across the car and grab it the other way. Like you're always trying to anticipate what could go wrong. It's true. (laughs) Yeah. But no, other than that, like I felt like it was relaxing, but we were also busy. So yeah, Mm -hmm. it is relaxing in that we're on our own time schedule in that way. If we filled it up, it's our own fault. Right. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here was a big one that we talked about making time for more people. Did you guys make more time for people? I would say yes. And this is this would be why I say that my summer was, it met my expectations and was successful. Even though I didn't go to the park and concerts mm-hmm. and the zoo and all that, 
this was the area that I really wanted to focus on. And I would say yes. With our beach vacation, we got to have the whole family together for a week. Mm. And we rode bikes. Um, One morning, the three girls, my daughter and daughter-in-law and me, we painted watercolors on the front porch of the house, like until lunchtime. Um, One day we were at the beach and a storm came up. So we just ran quickly under the covered walkover to the beach. You know, Mm -hmm. it has a cover on it. And instead of it ruining our day, we played Yahtzee for an hour. Oh, that's awesome. Just the three, like three of us were there. And it was just really fun. And we found some new coffee shops. That's not something I normally do on a beach vacation, but that was something Molly and Kayla were interested in. So the three of us did that. You've mentioned this before, Marie, like spending time out in the ocean, just hanging out in the water. Mm -hmm. It led to some good conversations between me and Kayla and me and my daughter. It was just, that was a relaxing week. And I feel like we were, we had some good relationship building time. Yeah, that yeah. isn't that just the best and what makes family vacation successful anyways. Like you mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter where you went or what you did if you got to spend time and have good conversations, then that is success. Right. I know I felt like this summer the Lord really blessed my trip with Grant because when we decided to take that trip for all of those football camps, I was able to see friends that I wouldn't have seen. Mm. So I got to see you guys. I got to um, see my friend Charlotte in Knoxville. I got to see, I want to get to get my hair done by my favorite lady in Knoxville, <laughs> Haley. And then I got to see a couple of friends in Georgia that I love and miss. And so it was just such a blessing to me to get to do that. Like it wouldn't have been there. And then One of the other joyful things is, you know, we really do need people. Um, I mentioned earlier that our last year was um, somewhat lonely Mm -hmm. and we had been trying to find a church home. And we actually, when we closed on this house, we decided to go ahead and join our church. And we, we, that was a momentous occasion that we each joined the church, except for Abby. She will be a part of her church in Chattanooga, but we're ready to start a small group in our home. We're ready to bring people through our doors and be hospitable and get to know people in this area. And we found that we had really kind of separated ourselves, you know, since we had not joined a church, that's usually where our family comes from. When we move to a place, that's how we find our friends. We hadn't really found that here yet, but we really need to to be a part of our church. We need to serve there and we need to have them in our home. So that's something I'm excited about that we've joined and now looking forward to doing in the near future. That is so important. And I think for you, having some place to invite people will yes, really help. It will. It will. I'm extremely thrilled about that. Yes. I didn't feel like I got together with more people, but what I did feel like I did a lot of this summer was finding ways to connect my oldest daughter who's married to Mm -hmm. her siblings. Like this is still a learning experience in our house with having kids that have moved out and are married and then still having kids that live at home. But you really still want to foster those relationships. And a lot of times they're not going to necessarily, especially from the side of the kids that are still at home, initiate that on their own. So like we planned several things, you know, we went to the movies with her one day, just the girls and I, we went down to her house, the girls took pictures with her, we went for ice cream, she came up here, we played games, like we just tried to plan things once a week or every other week where we would see her and it is a good time to do that in the summer because a lot of times during the school year, they're busy with sports and school all day, Mm -hmm. but in the summer... There's more freedom to do that. So I felt like we tried to do that. She also went on our family vacation, probably spent way more time with her siblings than she had anticipated, but it was still (laughs) good. You know, like those times are needed. And I'm really thankful that we got to see her a lot this summer. Oh, I love hearing that. Yeah, that's great. I'd like to give a shout out to Jamie Hull because um, after our mentoring episode, I think I even mentioned this in the episode that I had become friends with a girl at our church who's about my daughter's age or a little younger. And we had been friends, but I kind of took it to the next level and stepped into a mentoring relationship with her. Wow. And she said, you know, Julie, I've always considered you that anyway, but it seems a little more official now. Like we meet regularly. We meet every other week for lunch. I really am enjoying it. We aren't doing anything like a study or anything yet. We're just talking. I 
you know, know how to pray for her, but she seems to not want to miss it. And that's exciting. Um, And it's going both ways. She's teaching me things Mm -hmm. as well. And one night I really wanted to see Toy Story 4 and that's just not something my boys want to see or, or John was busy and don't have my daughter here. So I called her and we went to the movies together and that was really fun. That That's was a great. Real, really fun night. So uh, I'm thankful for Jamie to kind of yes. push me into that a little bit. I was I that was kind of a scary that thing. episode. Listening to that, I'm encouraged to hear your story now too. That'll be something that I feel like I want to be praying about too as we join our church and get to know mm-hmm. people. If anyone so. wants to listen to that episode, it's episode 35, and I'm sure that you have been a blessing to that girl just as much mm-hmm. as she's blessed you this summer, Julie. Yeah, it's been it's been great. All right. Did we read more? We talked about reading. And as I listened to what I had said about reading, I chuckled to myself. But first, I want to hear what you guys said. Did you do reading like you thought you might? I read the same. I OK, I, I haven't read any more or honestly any less. I have a Kindle that I keep by my bed and I'll read like one or two pages a night and then I go to sleep and that's, that's it. I've con- okay. I've been consistent. <laughs> have you even finished one book doing it like that? <laughs> um, I have, it takes a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, how about you? Um, I would say maybe about the typical summer reading. I kept up with my book club book. Mm-hmm. I read Remembering God by Annie F. Downs with mm-hmm. our college group girls. We went through that together. John and I actually both read a book together. This is probably... Oh, wow. We got to write this down. A hu- huge milestone. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a very long book, but it was the Love and Respect book by Dr. Egritz. Yes. Oh, okay. And he had a 20-hour drive to Massachusetts. And so I got it for him on audio and he listened to the whole book on the way up there. Oh, my oh, goodness. goodness. And so then I finished it and we had we were able to talk about it. So that oh, was so that awesome. hasn't happened in a long time. I'm curious, has there been any more, has there been more love and respect? (laughs) It's definitely a book that helps you understand what the other person needs. Oh, Oh, that's that's really really good. So would you recommend it? Oh, yes, definitely. And it's an old book. It's been around for quite a while. I've heard the title before, so that's great. We'll We'll give a link to that in our show notes. And then I did read a book called Fortune's Children, The Fall of the House of Vanderbilt. And it was a story about the families that built those houses in Newport, Rhode Island. So that made our trip. We talked about, I think all of us read a book about that time period. Right. So when we got there, we knew more than the audio tour was giving us. We knew more behind the scenes Ah, stuff. And love it. You know, it was it just made it a very interesting conversations around those houses and the people that lived there. That does make things come alive for you. If you are going on a historical type trip, I think reading a book about it just only yeah. adds to the fun. Right. Yeah. All right. So I re-listened to Summer Strategy and I laughed when I said that I like to read lighter, more romantic books in the summer. Because Uh-oh. when I thought about the last few books I've read, you guys are not going to think these are lighter, <laughs> more romantic books. So Steve and I had the chance to visit the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in California in June. And this was the first presidential library I'd ever been to. I thought it was a really cool experience. One of the really interesting topics that it covers is the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, which I think I was in high school maybe when that happened, maybe just going off to college. I can't remember. But anyways, I just knew that I hadn't paid that much attention, even though this was obviously a really pivotal moment in world history. So I have been reading about Life Behind the Iron Curtain. Oh, that's my (laughs) kind of reading, Marie. Wow. I, Not romantic. Though. No, I was <laughs> just like flabbergasted by like they said in the Ronald Reagan library that some people like whole families were split because like, say you went to work that day in West Germany right. and then East oh. Germany finished the wall. You couldn't get back. Right. So like I've been reading books called Stasi Land and mm-hmm. this one that was really good was 40 Autumns. And it was about a girl who on her second try escaped East Germany. She was about she was like the oldest of seven. But then it was 40 years before she was ever reunited with her family. And it kind of follows oh. her family's life in East Germany and then her life 
in West Germany, and then eventually she moved to America. I need to put a link up to that. I'd like to read that. Okay, yes. I'll put a link to 40 Autumns. I actually listened to that one. And it was so good for me because I just, like I said, I never really studied that because that was happening while I was in school. And I just didn't pay much attention to it as a teenager. Right. Then, I don't know how I got on this subject. I think I was looking for books to take on the cruise. And I just went to like Overdrive and wanted to download eBooks that were available now. So I started reading about the opioid crisis. Now, I don't know if I've been living under a rock, but I just didn't realize how it started. Julie, as a pharmacist, you probably know a lot about this, but I didn't realize, first of all, how serious it is. Right. Second of all, that like people literally just went in for surgeries and doctors were prescribing like 30 pills for wisdom tooth removal. Or even, yeah, the dentist. And yeah. by the time they're done with that prescription, like it's very, very addictive. And then I read some books about like written from the parents' perspective of trying to save their kids from this. And like they'll spend up to $300,000 on rehab after rehab. And it doesn't make a difference. Like people fall back into this addiction so easily. And it usually progresses to heroin and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was just very eye opening and, but not light and romantic no, at all. No. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> wow. So anyways, that's been my summer reading. I am reading a different book right now called A Stolen Marriage, which sounds much more up my summer alley. I'll let you know how it goes. Excellent. (laughs) All right. We have projects completed on our list. Did anybody complete any projects? I did. I did do my photo albums. We took a really big trip the last week of May, the first week of June. We went to Denmark and Switzerland. And that was probably the best trip of my life. So I wanted to get my photo albums made. I always like to get them made within a few weeks of returning home because I don't want to forget what things are, you know, because I like to label them and everything. So, um, (laughs) Julie, you are my hero. I don't understand that language. (laughs) (laughs) It just drives me nuts if I have that undone. It really does. She can leave her continuing education till the night before, but she's going to get those photo albums done. And Priority. label each picture. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but I seriously, I will look at that book every day. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> also, I made these little no sew curtains for my daughter's old room, our guest room. Oh. I have, I have taken it. There's, they were in this antique store in Nolensville. And every time I go in there, I take a picture of them and think, oh, I'm going to do that someday. Mm-hmm. I've probably taken a picture for the last three years. <laughs> And so I said, this year I'm going to do it. So a week ago, a week before my trip, I got them up. Really? Now, when you say no sew (laughs) curtains, what does that mean? I'm like double sided tape, staple. No, they are strips of fabric (laughs) that hang on a rod all together, if that makes sense. And so do you tear the fabric yourself, I assume? You pick out the fabric you want. And you put, it's called a larkspur knot, like you use in macrame. You put it over the rod and pull it through and it hangs Mm. down. And they're all different. Can we put a picture of those in our show, in our Instagram this week so people can yeah. have a visual? Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah. I can and see. I already had the fabric, so I didn't have to buy anything. Oh, I can see that oh, being that. a really fun project. It was. It was. I did it all in one night, so it was oh, fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> My only project was moving, so like that's <laughs> And the, that that's is it. a big project. And you've also <laughs> hung many pictures, Mindy, you said. Actually, I have. I really have. Mm-hmm. Your projects yeah. are just starting. They really are. I've changed batteries and clocks that no longer work. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I completed one dreaded project. I painted my bonus room, which has a lot of angles and kind of like those knee wall type walls. Right. It's just not a fun room to paint. It took me two entire days painting. That's all I did. But I am glad to have it done. And I'm glad to mark it off my list. I think I had that. You like the color? You like it? Um... I have that color in other rooms. You know how when you have colors in other rooms and then they look a little different in the room Mm -hmm, that you painted, but I think it's fine. It's definitely better than what was there before. And I don't know what else I would have done. So I I like it okay. And I'm not doing it again. (laughs) Exactly. You better like it because it took two full days. (laughs) Right. 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 Uh, One other thing I did, Marie, this reminded me, you reminded me of this is I hung plates on the wall. Oh. In the guest, in the same guest room where I made the curtains, I had collected over a hundred plates for my daughter-in-law and son's wedding 
like mismatched old china oh, with old flowers. China. And I love yeah. that. Yes. And I, I kept the, maybe my 20 favorite plates, mm-hmm. some to use for teas and parties. And then the, the ones that match her room, I hung with those little disc, yes. you know, the sticky disc. So it takes, you know, a whole day to get those on and let them dry. And then I had them all laid out on the bed, sticking them all on, let them dry. And then the next day I hung it up there and I really like it. So I, you can so actually fun. see the plates and the curtains in one picture. So oh, I'll, I'll, I'll post that. Yes. <laughs> be so pretty. Yes. I'm going to have to come visit that room again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've watched Marie's on the wall for, for years. They don't fall off. I didn't trust those things at first, but yes. I know that Marie's had them up for quite a while. So. Yeah. That's good to know. Cause I've hung plates on the wall, but with the, with that different contraption, the, the wire, metal, the wires. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I have two different plate walls in my house. And if I could have a third, I would. I just love, I love the the thrill of like, if I'm going to go to Goodwill, that's really what I'm going to look for. Like if the girls mm-hmm. want me to take them, I'll head back to the home section and, and look at plates. But it's like, well, I don't know if I, I have enough plate. places to <laughs> hang them. And I forgot about another project I finished. The gardening episode was so inspiring to me that yes. we ripped out a lot of old landscaping. Oh, yeah. And I bought a ton of clearance rack Lowe's plants. So I have had fun. Now, would I say that my landscaping is like anything to that real landscapers would do? No. I basically right. cleared the beds and planted whatever I wanted to oh, just it to looks see what good, would though. grow. It really does. Yeah. And, and when those roses get bigger and are blooming more, that's yeah. just going to be really, yeah. really nice. So I posted a picture of the hydrangeas in the front of the house. And this is just a really sweet story for me because when Bryce and I lived in Atlanta, um, there was this beautiful purple hydrangea bush outside. Our time in Atlanta was a hard season of life. That's when we experienced both of our miscarriages. Um, It was just a tough time. And so though we met some fabulous friends there, we were not sad to leave, um, both just the area cause it was so congested, but also just that season of life. Like, you mm-hmm. know, it's time to move on. Well, when we bought this house, we bought it before anything was blooming. And the Sunday before we closed on the house, we decided to do a drive by of the front of the house. Like, yay, we're closing on Tuesday. Let's go look at it again. Right. And um, we were driving by and I said, Bryce, they have purple hydrangeas. And it's something that I felt like in that moment, the Lord saw me. He remembered me. He gave me something that he knew meant a lot to me during another season of life where we were, I was very close to him because, you know, we were just having a hard time. I just felt so loved by the Lord that he knew that the house that we bought had purple hydrangeas and it seems so simple and like somebody might think that's ridiculous and it's just a plant. But to me, Mm -hmm. I felt like it was an over and above abundant blessing at our home to have purple hydrangeas. And so so I three huge bushes in the front of the house. Mm. That was the first thing I noticed in your pictures. There's a couple more on the side. I mean, it just brought tears to my eyes and chills. Like I just was like, he, the Lord sees me even something like this purple hydrangea bush, how much that would just bring me joy. And so I've got fresh cut, cut, um, hydrangeas on my counter in my kitchen. Yeah. So that (laughs) is awesome. All right. So in our summer strategy, episode, episode 31. Part of what we talked about was what puts fear into us every year. How are we going to get these teens through the summer? So how did your teens navigate the summer, Mindy? Did they stay on track? Yes and no. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm going to start with saying that our kids have been through a lot of transition. Um, Living in our townhouse, we did not have a yard for them to play in. There was, you know, I couldn't just kick them outside. Like Mm -hmm. right now I can kick them outside, even though it's stupid hot. Right, right. (laughs) Bryce and I just the other day, I'm just going to let you in on a little phone call that we had because I think it encapsulated maybe something that a lot of parents feel at this point in our summer where we're asking ourselves questions like, where did we go wrong? Why are we such bad parents? Why are our kids acting so entitled? 
our kids are horrible. What can we do differently? Can we get rid of their Xboxes, even though they bought them? Why are we even asking? Can we get rid of our parents would have never asked? Can I get rid of it? They would have just taken it out of there. Like, are we bad parents? We are bad parents. Like our kids, (laughs) what are we doing? (laughs) And you still have another month, Mindy. (laughs) I do. And so the boys and the Xbox, I don't know what it is, but they really, they will fight. They, they get angry. They have more struggles concerning that Xbox. And I'm like, why are we even dealing with this? You know, I I don't know what else to do. They did a great job helping us move, Mm -hmm. but now we're in the house and they want to play the Xbox again. And Bryce and I are having these conversations. (laughs) Right, right. Well, and people that don't have teenagers or don't have kids that play the Xbox are going to think to themselves, just get rid of it. Well, what are they going to do otherwise? I'm sorry. It is 95 degrees outside. Right. You can only stay outside so long. It is a world with screens. Like we just, we have to learn to use the screens for our benefit. Right. That's what Bryce says. (laughs) And not let them control, but there's a fine line and we're all going to struggle with it. Like you are not alone in that, Mindy. Okay. And I know that's hard on you, Mindy, because Bryce is at work all day. (laughs) You're the one that has to manage it and referee it. And so like I made the younger two go to the YMCA with me yesterday you know, every day I'm like, okay, I have to get them out of the house to do something right. Mm -hmm. Even, and they don't want to go anywhere, but I force them to go with me. And now like the yard needs to be mowed and I'm offering to pay money to mow the yard. And they're like, no, I really don't want to do that. I'm like, then you get your butt out there and do it for free. That's what I want to (laughs) say. Right. Yeah. I definitely think that there are people listening that can relate to this. And I think it's just a struggle all the moms go through. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I really think that kids by this point in the summer, too. I mean, I can remember right. TV was around when we were growing up and we watched too much of it in the summer. Like, you know, there what? comes a I, point. I find myself like, you need to watch TV. Get off the Xbox. I'm like, what am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. seem so bad anymore. Yes. <laughs> what? How come all of a sudden the TV is good, right? I know. <laughs> Well, they not like they'd rather watch YouTube on their phone. True. So like they get off their True. Xbox, and they get on their phone. I'm like, no, right. no, no, stop. Like no screens. Go watch TV. Right. I, yeah, and I'm like, I think, oh, wait a minute. I <laughs> the think TV's that, a screen. That we can romanticize our own childhood and think we didn't do any of this stuff. But we did. We were right. totally bored over at our friend's house watching MTV <laughs> all day long. And nobody was looking at us. <laughs> I know. I wasn't allowed to watch it at my house. I was watching Laverne and Shirley. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love Laverne and Shirley, too. <laughs> Well, I don't have a teen at home, but my son, David, you know, is still at home. He's in college Mm -hmm. and he had a really fun job this summer. And I thought I'd share it because it's a great teenager job as long as they can drive. Okay. And I've even thought of doing it myself. I mean, it's just such a great job. It's uh, he's worked for WAG, which is kind of like Uber for dog walking. You have an app and people put up a need for their dogs to either be walked, fed, let out in the backyard, whatever, for different time links. And right. you just jump on it and accept it. Uh, and it pays really well. And he's gotten a lot of regular walks that he does every day. And then he can kind of build on that by where he is. Like, oh, this one's close, so I'll take it. And he's been able to keep the radius really close to home. So he's not wasting okay. his time driving and in traffic. And That's uh, amazing. Yeah, I, I he set his own that. schedule so he could work really hard today and then go slow tomorrow if he wanted to. Right. I loved that he didn't have to ask off for vacation, mm. you know, because a lot of people don't want to give you three weeks off. That's mm-hmm. right. Or if he wants to do it when he starts college, he'll be in a different part of town. He could still work in Green Hills, sure. you know, between classes or afterwards. Oh, oh that's And cool. you can even work in another city. He even checked at the beach if there were any dog walks, you know. Really? That, that Are were, you yeah. serious? Yeah. Oh, so it's so just cool. been a really cool job. Yeah. You know, that that turns social media and like, you know, our screens into something really, really cool. I love yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. perfect The capability setup. of that is amazing. Yeah. Right. And he, it's funny because I think he's felt guilty that our own dog never gets walked. <gasps> Uh oh. So he has started walking our dog a couple Aww. of times a week. And he always wants me to go with him. And oh, so I say, 
yes, of course I'll mm-hmm. go walking with yeah. you. you know, I don't, I don't say that to him, but um, right. Inside, I jump you're cheering. on it. Yes. I jump on it. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can't show our kids too much excitement or they get scared and run away. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> don't want to push them away, but yeah. That's right. So that's been kind of a fun spontaneous relationship building thing that we've had this summer that I've enjoyed. That is awesome. Well, I think that you're going to get there, Mindy. Like right now, I think most of your fights are between your kids that are too too young to get jobs. But like this is the first summer all of my kids have the potential to work. So the girls turned 15 in May and they got jobs at Chick-fil-A. And I think the most they most hours they've worked in a week has been like 18 and their shifts are usually two or three and a half hours long, but it's just enough that there's a reason to get dressed. Mm -hmm. There's a time I've gotten out of the house. Like, I feel like it gives a little bit of structure to the summer so that we Mm -hmm. don't feel like we're just having to fill the entire day. And then my older son that's 16, he has a job that he works every day, you know, for anywhere from four to eight hours. It's a varying schedule. But that's been great for him because he still has plenty of free time. But yet Mm -hmm. he also has the structure. So I feel like you're almost there, Mindy. Mm. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Hang on. Because I feel like it's really, you know, the summer has the capability to show you exactly who your children are and there is no hiding it. Um, and it's exciting and a little scary. But yeah, Bryce and I totally had that conversation on the phone the other night. What are we doing wrong? We're terrible parents. Our kids are turning out like we're, we're afraid. I have that conversation with myself once a week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> what am I doing? Did anything surprise you guys about this summer? Yes. Something that really surprised me was just how sweet the little things are to be in our own home. And I've alluded to this earlier, but to be able to walk out of my own garage and walk across the grass to check my mailbox, Mm. um, you know, to see my kids playing in my yard. There's so many joys right now and being in our own home. And I think that I had guarded my heart for such a long time and And I think that had kept myself from thinking that Pennsylvania could be a really good place for us. I'm tired of feeling that way. I'm tired of of feeling like this is going to be a difficult place. I'm over it. I'm sick of that. I'm not going to be that Mindy anymore. I am ready for the Lord to do something new and I'm ready to thrive and I'm ready to be joyful and I'm ready to live. This is a new season. I am done with the old season and I am ready for this new one. Oh, awesome. that's, that is something that surprised me that, um, I was keeping myself from allowing the Lord to work. And that is a sin that I, I needed to confess. And by my joy, I see it spreading to my family. And Mm. so we are going to be a a different family, um, a more joyful family, and we're ready to thrive. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. It's true. The mom (laughs) sets the tone for the family, unfortunately. I mean, you really do. The burden is on us, yeah. It is a burden. And then when you're doing well, it's a joy. Mm -hmm. But but yes, I have to make sure my heart is right with Mm -hmm. the Lord. And I'm ready to see him do something new. And I'm getting very excited about what he can do with us here. Um, Now that I'm done saying this is, you know. A, a difficult place. No, no, no. Pennsylvania is going to be a really great place. <laughs> Yay, Pennsylvania. <That's> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, we had put down kind of to end on our best memory of the summer. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like a big one. It could just be something small. What did you guys have for that? Um, even though we travel, I got to travel to some amazing places this summer. I think my best memory was still just our whole family at the beach, hanging out mm-hmm. in the ocean, mm-hmm. playing yes. Yahtzee during a thunderstorm. That may sound kind of silly, but that was that surpassed all the other things. Right. Well, I think my best memory, this right. is just really fun for me. So at the beginning of the summer, the girls and I, we just really like to sit down and watch a show at night. Mm-hmm. And we really hadn't been able to find anything in the spring when they were in school and they were so busy anyways. But when summer started, I said, all right, girls, I think that we're going to watch Parenthood this summer. And oh. so it was the summer of Parenthood. And I oh. 
love that show. Parenthood is a show that I watched in the throes of teenage struggles with my oldest. I watched it in real time each Tuesday night, put the kids to bed, sit down and just cry and laugh and identify with these people on the screen. And then when Mm -hmm. it went to Netflix, I started watching it with my oldest daughter, who by that point had started to come out of a little bit of that teenage stuff. And we enjoyed watching it so much together. And now with my twin 15-year-old daughters, I just thought, I want to sit down and watch it with them. It is so powerful, and I love it so much, and I've cried and laughed, even though some of these episodes I've seen four and five times. How fun. Cool. That that gives you a standing date though with your girls. It and does. I love that. Yes. All right. Well, my um my favorite memory over the whole summer just happened the other night after living in a town home and and not having grass to walk on. Mm-hmm. You know, we walk on concrete to get to our cars and concrete to get to our front door. Um the other night Bryce took a moment out of unpacking and he put our badminton net up in the backyard Mm -hmm. and we went out and I got barefoot in the grass, which I love to walk barefoot in the grass. And we played badminton in our backyard. I was, that was my favorite thing. And we are just so goofy and teasing each other and there's no fighting. And (laughs) Mm, that's like the best. (laughs) And I'm feeling the grass between my toes, which just brings me so much joy. I loved it. It's it, we will continue to go out there in the evenings. And you know, that just brings your whole picture of moving to a close because that's what you picture happening, you know. It is. It is. So I'll try to get a picture of us out at the badminton net to share with our listeners. Um oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> cuz it, it's really one of my favorite family activities to do. Definitely. And, you know, the no fighting thing. I mean, we need to definitely document that. Oh, yeah. There's trash talking all over the place, but <laughs> in fun. In fun. <laughs> it's all right, in fun. Right. Uh, one thing that I would add back to my beach memories was because mm-hmm. I think we talked about this. This was the first year that family picture time was <gasps> actually fun. Oh, no. Everyone cooperated. Don't give me false hope. Even, Julie. even the ones that would normally be most persistent in rebelling against Uh would say hey mom wants another shot here everybody line up (gasps) and yes it was amazing so there is hope now they're 27 25 and 21 so you might you know you you still have a little time left Mindy but it it could happen yeah it could happen (laughs) (laughs) that is like they finally they don't they realize or I realized they still don't love it, but they were willing to do it for me. And that I you. really appreciated that. So. Oh, shout out to those King boys. Yeah. So one day I won't have to be yelling, do this because you love me, not because you want to. Right. <laughs> or just yelling, if you don't do this, you'll regret it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there's a couple of things I yell. <laughs> I don't have to look at these pictures and remember all the horrible fights that went on. Oh, five red, red, before red eyes. It was actually a yes. happy memory. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, listeners, I hope that our summer update has, one, made you laugh. Two, giving you hope. <laughs> Three, if you have a month like a month more to go, like Mindy does, I hope that you have, you can listen to this and know I can make it. I can make it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think I can. I think I can. Right. That's right. <laughs> if you have younger kids, it will get better. And if you have older kids, you can listen and reminisce. Even Mindy's story, like now that I don't have kids fighting over the Xbox, I can laugh and remember it from afar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Sounds great. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Friends, we're so glad you joined us today. If you enjoy Midlife Matters, we hope you'll tell a friend. Show them how to find us on their phone and hit the free subscribe button so that they never miss an episode. They can also download and listen to each episode right from our website, midlifematterspodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Midlife Matters Podcast. You can also email us at Midlife Matters Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you back here next Wednesday.